player do you think that moved this offseason is going to have the biggest impact on their new squad? I'm going to go with CP3. I'm going to go with CP3. And we're talking about, you know, having an impact not just on Victor Wembanyama, but the rest of those young players in that locker room and taking a lot of pressure off of Greg Popovich. And, and look, I said that the Spurs are going to be in the play-in tournament, and I believe that, right? Just imagine what Victor Wembanyama is going to learn from Chris Paul, arguably one of the greatest point guards to ever touch the damn basketball floor. So I'm looking at CP3, not only what he could bring on the court, but what he's going to bring off the court yeah. and how much of a benefit he's going to be to Greg Popovich. Look, I'm right there with you, Perk. Uh, the Spurs went from 0 to 100 real quick because last year, if you remember, they were experimenting <laughs> at the point guard position, having different players run point. And I think, you know, Victor was not happy with that because then you saw some of the games where, like, they weren't passing on the ball necessarily in the right places. And that is frustrating, especially if your goal is to win. We all know it's going to be a process for the Spurs to win, but by bringing in Chris Paul, I think you set the tone. If you know Chris, he has a no-nonsense approach to basketball. Every possession matters. And also, with the lobs, it's going to be fun to see what he does with Victor Webinyama. I'm going to go with Clay. Still odd seeing in that graphic with him in a Dallas uniform. But I, I understand for him, going to the Lakers, I think is actually even more pressure than playing for the Warriors. Going home, playing for his dad's team, you know, J.J. Reddick's a new young coach playing with LeBron. He's going to Dallas, and it's just going to be about basketball there. He's going to get the easiest threes that he got since yeah. he played with KD and Steph. He's going to sit in that corner, and the guys from the Mavs that weren't knocking them three down, he's going to get it. And the, the spotlight's not on him. Mm -hmm. There's two other stars. Clay don't want to talk to us. <laughs> Well, he's also just you know, he wants to talk to me about Oakland ball. Grill, eating omelets at Oakland Grill. Travis? He don't want to talk Isn't to me it about Lake Travis in Texas. We got to get him some water. Yeah, exactly. Yeah, good luck now with that. that. He's not going to be riding the boat to the arena. But it, for, it'll be about basketball, so I yeah. think he'll be great there, like Ray Allen going to Miami. I, I wanted to say Dejounte Murray to the Pelicans, but because we don't yet know what's happening with Bi there, yeah. right? I'm still wanting to see <laughs> that sort of incomplete summer be sort of complete. I love the Pelicans, Pelicans move. No one yep. said Paul George to the 76ers. Just too easy. Too obvious. But I think it's going to make a pretty dang yeah, yeah, impact yeah. on the yes. 76ers. Perk, final thought on this before we move on. Oh, no, I was just commenting on my on, on my brother Mark Spears <laughs> about the Ray Allen going to Miami. You, you know what I'm saying? My bad. It's too early. Uh, you it's too early. early. All right. It's We'll just run through a little of the best of the rest. It's a little chop it or drop it here. We're going to start by sticking with L.A. The Lakers, they're hiring Nate McMillan and Scott Brooks as top assistants alongside J.J. Redick on his new staff. It's according to Woj. And it gives the rookie head coach two longtime veterans on his team who have a combined 31 seasons of head coaching experience between them. But did you know, Mark, that these two, they have a little <laughs> bit of history. We have to go through the archives here. Ooh. McMillan and Brooks, okay. actually, they threw some hands back in 93 in the playoffs. <laughs> so Joppa or drop it. These two have officially squashed their beef, but in all reality, what do they bring to the well, staff? Well, uh, definitely chop it. And, you know, Scotty don't look tough, but he, he from, like, <laughs> central California. He's from farm country, so don't, <laughs> don't sleep on Scotty Brooks. I love this move for J.J. Redick. I mean, you, you got two veteran head coaches on your bench. Don't know everything. And one thing I know about Nate and Scotty, as you see right here, they're, they're tough-minded, and they won't be scared to say anything to anybody. So, to have two veteran former head coaches who are both capable of being head coaches in the league by your side. There's nothing that J.J. will miss, whether it's practice, yep. games, preparation. Great move by J.J. I love that little, you know, freeze right there on the, <laughs> just the, 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 the strangle moment. All right, Shanae, next up, Clay Thompson. The four-time champ's 13-year run with the Golden State Warriors has come to a close. It's still weird seeing his name over a Dallas blue, Mavericks right? signage here, right? His longtime teammate, Draymond Green, offered up his perspective on his latest podcast episode. Take a listen. I do know the joy that basketball brings him in life. It brought sadness. It brought unhappiness last year for him. And, again, if you ever care about someone's well-being, go through the struggle with somebody and you only care. Yeah, yeah, number one goal for that person is to see them happy and enjoying what they do because you care about their well-being, then, like, a part of me wanted Clay to leave. Um, and not wanting him to leave in the sense of, like, want him to leave. Uh, but want him to leave because you only want to see him be the guy that you know he is. 
Hmm. So Draymond thinks that basketball brought sadness and unhappiness to Clay last season, which honestly makes me sad to think about because Clay, when you watch him and he kind of has that fire in him, he's one of the most fun players yeah. to watch in the NBA. So chop it or drop it, do you think that Dallas sort of gives him that renewed sense of joy in this game? Let's chop it. Okay. Absolutely. And I think when you care about someone, you want them to be great no matter what environment they're in. And I do like that Draymond did say that. He also said that he had some tears. He didn't show it in the podcast, but you know, Man guys juice. are brothers. Man juice. <laughs> <laughs> Man juice, is that what we're calling tears? That's yeah. hilarious. But I do think it's difficult, especially when you're the first one of the big three in Golden State mm -hmm. to have their role truly minimized and also a lot of their problems pinned on you not performing at the level that came before. Now he chose to go somewhere where he doesn't have to deal with that. Yep. His role as a catch and shooter purely is going to be maximized alongside Luka Doncic. And you cannot knock him for wanting that, particularly because it's a difficult position to be in. Yeah. So I'm happy that they're happy. <laughs> both of them um, and care about the well-being first and foremost. And it's interesting to hear that perspective from Draymond, uh, a player that not that long ago we had questions about whether or not he would be the first player of that mm -hmm. trio to exit Golden State. And now it is still that that duo is still intact. All right, let's go to the East now. Next up, Donovan Mitchell. He dropped a little commercial. Did you see this for his newest shoe? Three Stripe Life. So he threw down a monster dunk in this ad. But, but Perk, was it? Too good of a slam. Watch it here. Chopper drop. Like, is this real? Absolutely not. You know oh who was real? God. Me shooting those three point shots. Me shooting those three point shots with lethal shooters. Uh -huh. Right here, they added a little <laughs> something to that. You could tell. You could tell when he went between his legs, it, it sped up a little bit. So. I mean, you know, at the end of the day, it was a dope commercial. Shout out to Cam Wilder. I see him doing his thing, you know what I'm saying? One of those guys <laughs> in the YouTube space that has maximized to his, to his ability. People, a lot of people, first of all, the video of you shooting three has got like hundreds of thousands of millions of views, Perk. People probably thought that was Photoshop too. Come on, man. Doc should have let you uh, shoot threes, man. Oh, Doc should have let you shoot My junk oh. video is actually No, no, no. I believe you, Perk. Perk, I believe it. Yours uh, were real. All right, last up, y'all. Have you, you checked the ESPN <laughs> bet odds lately? The Thunder, they leapfrog the Denver Nuggets. They have the best odds to win the Western Conference. So chop it or drop it, Mark. Oklahoma City has the best chance. They are the best team in the West here. Uh, chop it. All right. They've made some great moves. Um, Caruso, obviously. What has Denver done? Got DeAndre Jordan back. It's been really, really quiet. A lot of pressure on Calvin Booth. I like this because if you go just by the standings, yes, OKC is, you know, they finished number one in the West and they added key pieces. Their big question mark was who would be that guy to bolster alongside Chet Holmgren, the paint, yep. protect the paint. They added some protection there with Isaiah Hartenstein. And uh, overall, they got the guy that everyone wanted, Alex Caruso. Yes. That competitive guy that can help you win games based off of how hard he plays. I like it, but I don't know, Malika. You, you tell me. There's something to me about the Timberwolves. There's something to me. I there know is. they fell short. But don't forget about, like, the... Yeah. The I, Nuggets or who? No, the Nuggets I'm a little bit concerned about. I think that they have let a lot of pieces go here. I, I think that the Timberwolves are going to come back and try to avenge farther than yeah. they were last season. Because technically I think, they were farther than the Thunder. Right. But I think that Oklahoma City, I, I think that they ha they addressed the exact yes. needs that they needed to this offseason. Yeah. And largely we're seeing the Timberwolves sort of run it back. What do you think, Perk? Oh, they're the best team in the West. Sam Presti did his thing. Not thing, <laughs> thing. <laughs> this offseason, getting Cal uh, Alex Caruso, getting Isaiah Hardenstein, but then uh, being able to sign Isaiah Joe, who's a huge part of, of what they're building over there. One of the best shooters in the game, especially when he gets hot. So when you look at the core, yes, they still have their big three and they still have Lou Doris, who's a, a professional pest. But when it comes <laughs> down to one guy who I'm who I'm looking at, I'm looking at Jalen Williams. I'm looking at him to take a leap. Mm. I think he's going to be an all-star yeah. this year. I think he's going to be a 25-point mm. guy a night. That's how big of a leap he's going to take. They're clearly the best team in the NBA. Shout out to Sam Presti for doing his job. In the West and I'm just the giving NBA. flowers to Sam Presti. Yeah, yeah. No, no, in the West. Okay. Excuse me. I'm Gosh, sorry, Sinead. Yeah, yeah, yeah. I'm just giving flowers to Sam <laughs> Presti. Sometimes when you give out flowers, he gave me you just, my biggest the bouquets contract. get bigger than that you, part. The bouquets get bigger than, than, than you thought they would. All right. And I got on Lavender. I got on Lavender.